So I'm uh, Lydie Granger, pastor of a church in Dunkirk, north of France. And we have a charity working. And uh, we started a work around one year, 18 months ago in the, in the camp. Well, I would say, yeah, 18 months, 16 months. It started with the, what we call wild camp, which is the baroque camp where people were in tents and in mud and very bad conditions until, uh, until the mayor decided to, uh, uh, to open this new one in La Liniere, which you were uh, on Saturday, which is much more better in conditions. So, uh, his, yeah, our story is, as a pastor, uh, I knew everything that was going on in Calais, and I'm not proud about what I'm going to say right now, but Calais is um, 40 kilometers from us, and I knew lots of Christians were working in that camp, and uh, a lot were, was done, and it's, it was quite a distance for us. It's only 30 minutes driving, but um, as a church, we, we were not involved. Um, as a pastor, I thought, well, that's a bit far, and it's going to be lots of work, and, uh, and all these things. And I even didn't go and put my feet in it. Uh, so it, it lasted for three, four years, and I could hear all these things. Um, I could hear all these things in, um, in the news, see the pictures and all that. And, um, and, and, and that was so close, and I never went, I, and I never went. But then when, uh, when this thing uh, came up to Grand Sand, which is only 10 minutes driving, really, it's like our town. Um, and our, our volunteer was, uh, Dula, you know, was going in here, she started to go. And I said, well, this time I can't ex escape, really. I need to confront. I need to face what's going on. And, and that was a big shock in my life. I had to repent <laughs> somehow. Uh, yeah. And specifically, what have, you, what have you found the situation to be for the Christian minority? The Christian minority. Uh, in that first camp, we didn't find lots of Christians, really. Uh, at that time, I think they were sort of uh, hiding themselves. Um, um, but yeah, we 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 didn't meet lots of Christians. We meet uh, we met uh, Iranian family, and the lady was a Jew, and uh, and another couple with kids. What we did is bringing them in church. No meeting, you know, no. No religious thing. It was only uh, for a meal. Took them on the on the beach for a walk. Just take them out of the camp of the conditions, and and from that, that's how we all started. Um, uh, we started to go in the camp, ask the needs of the family, and we would bring them chicken and uh, vegetables for them to be able to cook something beside what we would do at church. And that's how everything started, but it wasn't. It's, it didn't start with uh, with the religious religious outreach uh, thing. We just started on the human side. And in that camp, even though there were Christians, probably uh, that's not where we had Christians. But there was persecution in that camp. You know, a, a man uh, has been killed. Um, and some of them uh, uh, were going in two churches in the area. Um, and it's, it's step by step by building relationships and making us know that uh, we found out more Christians when, when there has been the change in the other camp. So what happened is um, <clears throat> uh, from, yeah, Time to time, we started to have people uh, in church, as you saw yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> but it was like more Muslims people coming to church and doing some outreach. And I would say the first people we had in church, they, they got converted. They became Christians. It wasn't uh, really a persecuted Christian. 
that it's people that were just uh, going away from their country because of the conditions of life, also because of uh, the religious pressure, but not because they were Christians.